2nd of July 2023. This is uh, This and That and What the Fuck Else, episode 165. And it's another one of that Sunday is a fun day news presentations. And I have tried to select some news items that is obviously of value for us, but in a little bit of a lighter mood. Because the serious stuff, we are absolutely bombarded with serious stuff. The world is... Yeah, I don't want to say it's gone crazy, but it's close to that. There's a lot of insanity around us. And as I mentioned to a guy that I had a discussion with, and I'll do a skid mark about that discussion, we are actually being bombarded with a lot of information. But you have to keep your eyes open because the reality is right in front of our eyes. We are seeing the Western Empire collapsing. Now, when we were youngsters, we were reading and learning at school in history and so on. We heard about the fall of the Roman Empire and the fall of this empire and that empire. and It was all history. And you reading in the books and you try to imagine. But the fact of the reality is the reality of that collapse is far away, way in the past. And we, we are not really connected to it. But now we are seeing the fall of the Western Empire right in front of our eyes. And if you look at certain aspects, it's basically following the same route as all the empires in front of it, before it. Main things corruption, and then the absolute collapse of morality. And that collapse of morality, in my opinion, is fueled by people that has become too comfortable. Too comfortable, too safe. There's nothing for them that was challenging their existence anymore. So we will going around looking for things to keep themselves busy with. And then you see things like BLM and the gender thing, all of that. And people try to become so... Uh, I'm battling to find the right word for it, but they, they become so uh, intellectually advanced that they can discuss and resolve everything and behind all of that the corruption is blooming and flourishing and that corruption legally administratively morally that corruption in eating the society and then you've got on top of that the Western leader's corpse is made up of a lot of idiots. When I was a young man in my 20s, there was no way in the world that you would see a leader like Macron, like Van der Crazy, like Beerbuck, Dumbuck, people like that, Joe Biden, Blinken, Kerry. People like that would never have featured anywhere near a leadership position. Why? Because the society, the society leaders were strong, intelligent men. And, yeah, call me a chauvinist, I don't care. But that's the realities. Today, we sit with a lot of weaklings, they, they are not people that indicate to you that they understand the responsibility of leading their nations. That is the reality. But in any case, enough of that. There's one thing that has changed in this one. Of course, I'm going to start with the Russian 
with, with a Russian slicer, but I had an interesting email from one of the followers of the channel, and she said, uh, talking about the fact that I'm on the back page, I show chicks for the men. And she said, but uh, what about our, us, the women? And as I said in my skid mark, I wouldn't be so comfortable to selecting men because <laughs> that will go against my grain. So she sent, she sent me four images that I will include on the back page today. I hope you guys enjoy it and especially the girls. But guys, don't worry. I haven't forgotten about you. But let's get off with the slideshow about Russia. And today we're looking at Tomsk and it is beautiful photographs and yeah, it looks like a beautiful city. Great city, and I had to smile when I saw all the lights burning in those cities, in those streets, and on the buildings and so forth. <laughs> Makes me think about load shedding. And we start off in the Baltics, and look at this smiling popo. Lithuanian President Gitanas Nausida announced the purchase of two Norwegian NASAMS air defense systems for Ukraine. He stated this in social networks before his visit to Kiev. Now I've got a few questions for him. First of all, where the hell is the money coming from with which he's buying those systems? Because we know those things are more of expensive. Where is the money coming from? Oh, I forgot. Germany will most provide a lot of money to the EU and they will send money to this postage stamp orphan child. It's already got a massive overdraft but they'll send him more and then he'll use that overdraft facility and buy stuff for Kiev. Fuck his own citizens, they don't count. And we stay in the Baltics. And this one. <laughs> Ukraine flag more patriotic than ours. The Lithuanian MP. Lithuanian Simas Deputy Kestutis boasted on, boasted on social media that he lowered the national flag in his polling station and raise the Ukrainian flag instead. Masulius believe that in the current conditions, using the flag of Ukraine is much more patriotic than the flag of Lithuania. And I'm not going to even carry on with it. What fucking madness is that? I said the world is going crazy. And then we get to this one. And... You just have to shake your head and that's from that geriatric in the shit house in Washington. Another masterpiece from Biden. A dark skinned student asked Biden for advice in case she was stopped by the police. His answer just killed us. I was pulled over recently by the traffic police for a tri trivial matter. If I were your daughter, what advice would you give me the next time I'm stopped by the police? And the answer? If you were my daughter, you'd be a Caucasian girl and you wouldn't be pulled over. How's that? And then we get to this cartoon and you look at that and obviously it's a Russian cartoon and the child says, Grandpa, why do the aliens in the movies always attack only the U.S.? And the grandpa answers, 
They want to save the world. Very appropriate answer. And now we're in the EU, and Mick Wallace, he's in the EC Parliament, a voice of sanity. Damage to Ukraine is devastating. Plus, sadly, Zelensky has now used the current war to concentrate power, accelerate the corporate fire sale. Over 3 million hectares of agri-lands are now owned by the companies based in western tax havens. What are the working class Ukrainians dying for? Think about that. And then we go to France and we're all aware of that. Riots going on there and I've been talking about the immigrants and the potential problem for a long time in my skid marks. You can go back right up to the beginning. And I've done separate skid marks specifically about uh, England, the UK, and this is in France. And France is on fire. Olympics pool on fire in, the, in Paris as anti-police riots resume for the third night in France. Violent clashes erupted for the third consecutive night in France over the fatal police shooting of a teenager, resulting in the swimming pool construction site for the upcoming Paris Olympics being consumed by flames. That's it. But I have said it many times and I'm saying it again. The bulk of those immigrants that has been so welcomed with open arms by the Europeans the Europeans were warned first by the Arabs. They told them, you guys are stupid taking these people in. Most of those young men that you've got there are fleeing from justice in our countries. And if you think they're coming to your country to work, you're making a mistake. They didn't even want to work in their own countries. But they ignored the Arabs. And I am of the opinion and those immigrants are Zionist soldiers there to bring the Kalergi plan to fruition. And here you can see it. And I've said when all that arms were starting flowing into the Ukraine with basically no controls there, a lot of those arms are going to land in Europe and they are there to arm this Zionist soldiers. Think about that. And then we get this. French police are fired upon with American rifles that may have come from Ukraine. May have come, he says. Let's see about that. And then obviously, the internet always provides you with some fun. Look at this meme. Macron asked Lukashenko to stop the civil war in France. <laughs> Very appropriate. And then I get to this one and now you guys, all of you woke, all those woke people must think about it. And the men must look at this. Have some pride. Date this. Look at that. Look at that. It's nauseating. But... We have to be accommodating. But that's what you get. Let me get to the green stuff. And this is, I like the image. And one of my followers on Twitter sent it to me. Check this. South Africans must withhold all taxes where possible until load shedding stops. The government is terrorizing us with load shedding on purpose. In days of old, we build new coal power stations in less time than we have had load shedding. And you see SA Coal, and you see Germany, and you look at the green bullshit. Very appropriate. And then we get to this one. And I had to laugh when I read this one. Gas guzzlers cheaper to use in Britain than electric vehicles. Soaring electricity costs in the UK have made gasoline and diesel cars cheaper to use than the, environment, eh, than the environmentally friendly electric vehicles. 
as charging the latter has become almost unaffordable for many, a report by the Climate Change Committee showed. And that is the reality and they don't even mention the absolute horrific nightmare that awaits us with these batteries when they reach end of life. And then we've got this meme which is appropriate seeing that everybody told and every Western news media told you Putin was falling. But we wanted to see a civil war and then it's Biden and Macron and all those scary cats from the West and Putin hangs out the sign. Coup cancelled. And he says to them, go see one at home. Think about that. And then we have this meme, very appropriate. Supposedly this cow was farting a lot and ruining the environment. So I ate it. You're welcome. Be a hero, eat meat. And I, this guy will get my boat. And then we get to NATO and that Zatsy cokehead from Kiev. Zelensky is blackmailing his masters. Zelensky will not go to the NATO summit in Vilnius if the leaders of the countries of the alliance do not show courage. Courage. We are talking about the fact that at the meeting on July 11 and 12, an answer was given to Kiev's application to join NATO. Submitted on September 30. And the answer means an invitation to membership in the alliance. This is what they want. They want to be part of NATO. They're smoking too much shit there in Kiev. And then we get to Stolti. And listen to this craziness. Quran burning not illegal. NATO Secretary General Stoltenberg. Jen Stoltenberg has defended Sweden's decision to allow Wednesday's burning of the Quran in Stockholm as it was not illegal. He also said that negotiations with Turkey on the admission of Sweden to NATO will continue. What the fuck are these guys thinking? Are they smoking? I don't know what they're smoking. Or well, maybe they're using it intravenously. Turkey is a Muslim country. And Turkey has been blocking Sweden because of other issues with terrorists that Sweden is harboring. And this bright spark Stoltenberg thinks he can be happy with burning the Quran in Sweden and then expect Turkey to support him to get Sweden into NATO. <laughs> and more craziness. Titanic sub update. Ocean Gate still advertising Titan trips after human remains recovered from the wreckage. Ocean Gate continues to sell tickets for the Titanic tour after the submarine's passengers' death. And this time, those wishing to purchase tours for 2024 can do so on the organization's website. The cost of such trip has not changed and is still $250,000 per person. <laughs> Who the hell will buy a ticket? They must still build a new sub with the other one imploded. And then we get to put down. Look at this. The grand staircase of the red porch in the Kremlin impressed the world's newspapers. And the tongue and the cheek question here is, will Biden make it down those stairs? I don't think so. And then we get to this. And I have to talk about this. Vladimir Putin visited Juma Mosque on the first day of Eid al adha The mosque is considered one of the oldest in the world and the oldest in Russia. Now there are some people that watch the program even that will now say Putin is a Muslim because he visits a mosque. But they can live in that world. Reality is Putin is the president of a multicultural country, 190 ethnic groups, 
over 2,000 cultural groups. And I've said it in previous skid marks. One of the most impressive traits of Putin for me is his respect for people. And look at this. That's a president that has respect for his citizens. And you wonder why his approval rating is 90%. 90%. Let that sink in. After the coup, 90%. And more Putin. Putin met with Kadarov on June 27. Very few have a selfie with the president. And then we get more. That's from Putin's visit to the mosque. During the visit there, the president was presented with a Quran. And more Putin. Putin is met by people in Derbent. Now, not only Ramzan Kadarov has a selfie with Putin. Guys, this is a man. And then we get here and more craziness to laugh about. Prepare for the fall of Putin, Britain told. <laughs> and I wonder what they're telling them now. And then we get, this is a little bit more serious, but it's also actually, you should actually laugh at the crap before because of the craziness around the whole thing. Imposing sanctions against Russia, completely irresponsible. That's what the Prime Minister of Georgia says. And my rabbit, Zaxi, made a big story about Georgia. I don't even want to repeat it, but that guy. This can be called a betrayal of the interest of our country and people. Irakli Karib Karibashvili said, if someone had suffered, our country would have suffered. And my stalker was of the opinion that Georgia is going to attack Russia. And then I've got this little bit of info that a follower on Twitter sent me, just to give you guys an idea of what I'm battling with. Jy is erg geshadow ban, kan jou nie eers in die search column opspoor nie, en jou posts is nie gereeld sigbaar nie. You are severely shadow banned. I can't even find you in the search column. That's what I'm battling with guys, and that's why I need you to like and share. It's very important, because that is, you are the only people that can help me go, because my channel, goes against the popular Western narrative. And then we're in the Ukraine, and look at this craziness. And another thing that my pet Zotzi likes so much, he has got so much adulation for that cokehead in Kiev. Look what this guy is doing to Christians. Ukraine court extends Metropolitan Pavel's 24-hour house arrest. The vicar of the Kiev, Persk Lavra, will now remain under round-the-clock house arrest conditions for two months. Great stuff! And then there's this one from uh, Tucker. I think most of you guys have heard of it. But Tucker Carlson in his episode 7. Irony alert. The war for democracy enables dictatorships. And he refers to that coquette in Kiev because that guy has now suspended the elections and he's also suspended the presidential elections. And then another one that you can just look at and smile of the insanity in it. Look at that. Another destroyed German Leopard 2A4 in the Zaporizhia direction. How do you Germans sleep? Okay? Well, then okay. And that is German taxpayer money turned into scrap metal. And then we get to South Africa. And this tweeter said, first it was apartheid and we Jan, but now it's the Boer War. ANC KZN Provincial Secretary Becky Malolo said that the province will have a cleansing ceremony as I believe that the high murder rate is caused by bad spirits dating back to the Anglo-Boer War. Jacob Zuma Willie Mchunu 
and Satsi Moslongo will be at the forefront of this progress. Now the reason I've included this here, in my discussion with a guy that I'm going to do a skid mark about, we specifically talked about culture and the role that culture play in the relationships between people. For the average Afrikaner, this is a laughing matter. But for the average Zulu, this is a serious matter. And I am of the opinion that disrespect for other people's culture is basically one of the root causes of so much racial tension in South Africa. We need to learn, like the Russians, we need to learn to respect each other's cultures. Yes, this may sound over the top to you as a Christian Afrikaner, but look at it from a Zulu standpoint. You don't have to agree with it, but you need to respect it, because that is what a decent person do. You respect other people. And we need to respect their culture because we expect them to respect our culture. It's a two-way street, guys. I'm looking forward to doing that skid mark because it was a very interesting discussion we had. I'm not going to handle everything that we were discussing, but it was a, it was a fantastic experience for two guys of different cultures, different backgrounds manage to almost for a day chat about things that we see and how we experience and yes there were a few tense moments right in the beginning and then I uh, said to him but you must understand I can appreciate what you are saying but you also have to appreciate what I'm saying and then we must look at it but I'll do a skid mark on that one. So, yeah, see this, look at it, think about it, but keep your thoughts to yourself. Because respect is, in my opinion, the basis and foundation for any relationship. And then we get to this, yeah, it's not a fun day, and so this is not so fun, but it's actually hilarious. Goodbye post office, over 300 branches closed in three years to cut 7,000 of the 11,000 SAPU employees. Bailouts amounting to 10.39 billion rand since 2014. This is really sad to think in 2023, South Africa don't even have an operational postal services. This is things that other countries sorted out in the 1800s. This is things that worked in 1904. In 1994, you could walk into a post office, mail a letter, and expect the recipient to get it. 2023, they're closing the post offices down. Now for me and you, sitting here and listening to it, this is not maybe such an important step, but there's a hell of a big part of the community in this country that depends on the post office. They cannot afford couriers. This is where they get their pensions. This is where families send them money to survive just like that, ripped out of existence. This is a disaster. Although it's on a fun day news broadcast, this is a disaster. And then finally, we get to this piece of news. Attention, investigative journalist. Why did Putin want to question the ex-ambassador, McPaul, McFall, who together with Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton were already focusing on the strategic location of the Southern Sea Route over a decade 
ago. And this guy shared this tweet with me because I have said it in so many of my skidmark that the real reason for South Africa in BRICS is the Cape Sea route. But I hope you've enjoyed this and had fun because now we get to that moment, that back page moment and today I've got some offerings for the eyes, eye candy for the men and the women. And the follower that sent it to me, her words exactly in the email, Jou skitmark 164 was uitstekend. A voorstel, asjeblief. Ek stier vir jou foto's wat jy kan gebruik vir die girls. Ons mechanics werk ons anders as die manne sin. Ons hou nie van spiertiere nie. Al dink die spiertiere ons hou daarvan. Gebruik hierdie foto's vir die girls. In short, she says, Please use these photographs for the girls. We don't like the muscle maniacs. Although the muscle maniacs thinks we like it. Enjoy it. All I will say is, Lavrov is cool and some good looking chicks there. Have a great day. And please give me a like and a subscribe and share and thank you for your support. I, uh, we have hit the magic 5000 followers mark, which is a great occasion for me. And you will see in the description of the video and the pinned comment. If you want to support the channel, you can use one of those four options there. Thank you. Have a great day.